All right, next question is from Evan Seaman03. What is the best method for ink mixing? I don't think either of us can say what the best overall method for ink mixing is. We don't do that on a regular basis. Pouring one into the other, I think, is the best method. I'm going to disagree with him. Putting both of them in the same container. Big mistake. I would call that as the best method. Big mistake. Fair enough. Agree Um, to disagree. But uh, there are definitely ways you could do it poorly. It's generally understood that the safest way Mm -hmm. to do it is to stick using inks from the same brand, same manufacturer, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. just so you don't go adding any crazy components to you know something that it does not agree with. Mm-hmm. Usually, if a manufacturer makes an ink, it's you know using the same sort of methods, mm-hmm. same basic materials, nothing super crazy there. And I'll, I'll go one step further than that and say the same series within a brand. Not a bad idea. You know, for example, Noodlers has a lot of different things going on. A lot on. of properties, yes, sir. You know, so the Bay State inks should only be mixed with other Bay State Good call. colors. You know, the conventional line, yeah, they're all fine. I think if you're going with a Diamine Shimmer Tastic and you want to mix it, go with another Diamine Shimmer Tastic. However, know. if you do want to get a little crazy and add a Diamine Shimmer Tastic to a Noodler's Bay State, go ahead. Yes, but watch it explode. Do it in a small amount in an ink sample <laughs> vial and let it sit for at least a day before putting it in your pen. Just in case it summons Cthulhu. So so what now? Hmm? Cthulhu? What? What Anyway. What is that? You can't just drop that and and walk away. Cthulhu. It's a giant um, Lovecraftian monster. Lovecraftian? What is it? Squid face man. What? What are you talking about? It's a giant monster with bat wings, a squid head, and you've never heard of Cthulhu. I literally don't know what you're talking about right now. It's it's a it's a it's a Lovecraft monster. I understand monster. Love uh, H. G. Lovecraft, the author. Nope. No. Okay. I got nothing. Is it nonfiction? Doesn't sound like it. If it's fiction, I got nothing for you. <laughs> Do you think that what I'm talking about actually exists? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know everything. Anyway, um, no, it's, it's fiction. <laughs> Are you amused that I asked you if that was nonfiction? <laughs> <laughs> um, just somebody's gonna be really amused by this be conversation. Be safe with it. Um, <laughs> let it sit. If you do something wacky, honestly, it's a good idea to let it sit, even if you don't do something wacky, because you never know what's in there. We don't have a lot of, and by a lot of, I mean zero insight on how ink is made. Like th- they are I mean, not transparent about what they put in there. Any sort true. of material safety data information, we don't know. Generally, it's speaking, not radioactive yeah. or anything. But mm-hmm. other than that, we have no idea. Um, and yeah. then I would also say that there are some inks like Diatramentis. Um, they actually sell a mm-hmm. dilution fluid that yeah. you can use to actually dilute your ink, mm-hmm. turn you know a bottle of nitrogen into four bottles of nice blue ink, mm-hmm. um, uh, or whiteness <laughs> of the whale. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. To regular blue, um, whiteness of the whale is in Noodler's Eternal inks. It's a little bottle, but it's mm-hmm. actually contrary to popular belief, not supposed to be used as a white ink, but a dilution fluid to lighten or whiten your inks. Yeah, so you so, can turn your red a Pink Pink. color. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or whatever. And um, one thing that I asked um, Brian um, K over on the customer care team, Mm -hmm. he likes to mix ink, and he said Mm. that Jeremy, our other guy here that likes to make inks, recommended to him counting drops is a good way to Mm -hmm. measure the ratio. If you don't have the equipment necessary to kind of weigh by volume, using a disposable pipette, which produces better drops than a syringe. Syringe is hard to control precisely. A disposable pipette that we also sell can Mm -hmm. control drops Mm -hmm. a little bit better and just count your drops. Like this is a three to one or, you know, Mm -hmm. a two to three. So it's a lot better to kind of scale it up from there when you're starting in the ink sample vials. That actually is part of the reason why we carry those disposable pipettes instead of of just having the syringes uh, it is partly for ink mixing and stuff like that of course you can use it to transfer ink to a new bottle or whatever but um, that's part of why is for that ink mixing exactly um, so yeah I think that there's a lot of great threads on ink mixing on the fountain pen network there's oh my gosh so many reviews where people have mixed it and they get pretty scientific and I think there's a whole sub forum mm-hmm. within there about ink mixing with different recipes and reactions and stuff so I think that's a great resource you don't have to sign up for it to be able to view it I don't believe so I think you can just go learn and look at some of the formulas people have already come up with, including, you know, some people have come up with, um, you know, discontinued ink colors and people have experimented to try to recreate some of those colors. And so there have been some varying degrees of success on that. So it's a pretty interesting place to go hang out if that is your thing. 
Uh, also, there are some, uh, you know, kind of kits, I guess, that have come out over the years mm -hmm. with various manufacturers. They don't usually get a whole lot of love and get a lot talked about all over the place, but I thought it was worth mentioning a few in case that was a thing for you. Um, so Platinum has their Mix Free. They do it a little differently. They have, what is it, nine different ink colors. And I don't know. Do we still sell mix those? Them. Good question. <laughs> Should have checked, um, but that that is a. I thing. haven't heard about them in a long I mean, time. It came out like ten years ago, but anyway, so that's a thing you can mix some of those, and they had a whole chart for how to mix them and get different colors and stuff. It was this very big thing that was a thing. Uh, also, you could go with more of a CMYK kind of mixture if you're a color guru, or if you're familiar with like the printing process or that kind of stuff. CMYK with the four colors, you can basically mix you know, almost any color that you want by different ratios. There's plenty about that on the Fountain Pen Network, I know, but mm -hmm. um, that's the basis for the Paniter Alchemy set. So there are four different colors, CMYK plus a dilution liquid, and they give you some extra bottles and stuff. So that's very fancy packaging. So if you really want to feel like a baller doing your ink mixing, Paniter Alchemy is the way to go. Uh, but you can also mimic the whole CMYK thing. I've seen people do it with Noodler's ink colors using Noodler's uh, yellow, I think it's Segura wine, but I'm not sure. Some magenta e color. Mm, that's a nice magenta. Um, that's one option. And then uh, Noodler's turquoise and then black to get your CMYK. Hmm. So you can mess around with those. And then Drew mentioned the detrimentous document inks. I know that's something pretty popular. People are doing watercolor stuff or doing uh, urban sketching. Uh, not uncommon at all for people to mix those together as well. And I think that's, that's part of what the vibe is there. So lots of options for you, but uh, it's definitely a whole subset of the whole fountain pen yeah. experience is getting into ink mixing so more to explore but not something that we are doing every day ourselves necessarily 